the snow has come and gone in waves this year. Some early days of February looked as if spring had already arrived. Some scenes in my animated film project are set here in town, so I try to capture photographic reference during the right seasons, which will then inform my background paintings for the film. Here, next to the river Sill, we have a great climbing gym, Kletecentrum, Innsbruck. I want to include a few exterior shots in my film from this place, showing the large walls with the epic mountains behind them. My animated film is about rock climbing, and I got a bunch of videos you can check out about this ongoing project here on the channel. There will be a scene in my film set inside this climbing gym, but I'm thinking a shot similar to this one might work well as an establishing shot before we cut inside. The mountain in the background is Nockspitze, one of the many peaks surrounding the city. But in this particular view and this shot that I captured, I don't feel it looks grand enough. Luckily, as I'm now going to paint this, a bit of artistic license is allowed. A simple sketch of the scene is the fastest way to explore compositional ideas and get the main design fleshed out. I'm only focusing on the general shapes, placements and scale of things at this point. I move quickly with a larger brush. We can push things here to build a better composition. While still trying to keep the general shape of the peak recognizable, I can stretch it a bit and exaggerate some of its features. Always aiming for a balanced scene where different shapes complement each other. I highly suggest spending an extra moment in this state of a painting, as it will hold the most crucial decisions and direct the rest of the process when we start rendering this with colors. It is so quick to make changes here, so make sure you've really explored a few options before moving on to the next step. In the foreground, I want the large overhanging climbing wall to cut through the composition like in my captured reference. This is quite a cropped field of view, which doesn't leave us with more than two layers of depth. Well, three if we count the sky as one. It's the foreground wall and the background mountain, really. We have depth in terms of the distance between the two, but no real connection between them. We're not following a road or stream or any vectors into the scene. Those are often strong compositional methods that create interest and lead you through the picture in a three-dimensional way. Though, when making a film, each individual shot has a purpose in a larger context rather than fully standing on their own feet. I obviously want to create a striking image here, but my goal is to make the viewer aware that we're now in town at a local climbing wall set in this grand location. So in this case, I think a more focused image like this one will work. This will be followed by another exterior shot of my protagonist entering the facility. So rather than telling the story in one image, we do it in a sequence. What I like about painting mountains is that in their irregular appearance, they often have very clear directional planes, which simplifies the overall shape of them. When shining a light onto them, you can really make those three-dimensional forms pop. Here, the peak is slightly backlit from the top left, putting the foreground climbing wall in shadow. The shape of the wall and the mountain kind of mimic one another here, which could be dangerous territory. But I think it's not close enough to make it distracting, and I like the shape of the negative space it creates between them. When flipping the full canvas, I feel like it's quite balanced. I try to further create interest by letting these open slopes in the forest swoop through the image and lead the eye towards the mountain peak. They also help to describe the geometry of these lower hills, all adding to a more three-dimensional shape. If I now zoom into the image, you can see that we don't really have any real details. It's all quite loose at this point, but it can be good to establish the overall image like this before diving into any smaller details if desired. I will not give the mountain much more fine details than what you see here, though I will clean up a lot of these shapes so they're not so blurry. 
I have been using a very flat shaped brush for all of this, which I find does a good job at keeping things painterly when blocking things in. It's probably not desirable to paint everything with an equal amount of details. That might flatten the image into more of a texture rather than a painting with depth and direction. There are definitely no rules here, but a mountain far away might be better described with general shapes that makes it read as being made up of snow, rock and forests rather than perfectly rendered such. As the foreground wall, with its many climbing holes, is closer to the camera, it can be more accurately rendered, I think, making it stand out from the background. What I might do when slotting this into the film later down the line is to animate a focus pull from the mountain to the foreground wall. But I would not want to bake in any depth of field here in this painting process, but rather do that in After Effects later, so that it can be animated between the two. Rocks and mountains are just so much fun to paint. If you want to see more content than what I have here on this channel, you can check out my Patreon page as well. There's a lot of extra videos over there for you to binge through. Another background painting completed, ticked off from the long list of shots that will one day line up in the edit as a finished animated film. I am in no rush as the process of making something is really what I seek. And if the end product does turn out to be good, then isn't that just great? Hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.